All right, welcome back to another Harmonious at Lunch. I am here with a special guest today, Brandon, again, your host, and I want to welcome you into another Harmonious at Lunch. Typically, we talk about the harmonious business architecture, the 10 disciplines in business that you need to master in order for your business to thrive and grow to the next level and succeed. Today is going to be a little bit different. We're still going to talk about business. We have a, a unique guest, but we're also going to talk about a topic that I don't know, maybe a little taboo in the workplace, definitely underspoken about, and we're going to bring that to light today. So, Michelle, I want to welcome you to Harmonious at Lunch. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Brandon. I certainly appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited to dive in here. So mm -hmm. give me a little bit about your background um, and then ultimately what brought you into working for yourself. Sure. Well, my name is Michelle Steiner. I am a disability writer, photographer, and paraeducator on the side, but I also work as um, a paraeducator in a school. And part of what brought me into uh, my job that I do for a blog and, and photographer is I have always had a passion for writing ever since I was young. And uh, I finally, I took the advice of a friend that to talk about writing uh, and I had some disability articles published uh, about some of my issues with having a, my own learning disability. And I was offered a scholarship about four years ago when COVID happened uh, for, for an agency that gave away uh, uh, scholarships for, uh, for artists that had disabilities and to be able to create however they create art and for their supplies. And I decided, well, why don't I start a blog with this? And I started a blog called Michelle's Mission, and it started out just as a, a blog where I talked about my life with having a learning disability and posted a few of my pictures that I take on my walks because I'm unable to drive. And I, I enjoy doing that. I had a lot of uh, great feedback from that. I definitely uh, liked that. And this summer, I decided whenever I was going to renew that, that I wasn't going to go with the, the company I was before, I used a different one because I wanted to create a little store that I was able to uh, be able to have my artwork for sale. And I also created a, a disability forum where people with disabilities can connect as well. That's awesome. So I, I want to ask about mm -hmm. all of that. It's, it's an amazing sure. story, but I'm curious if we go all the way back, what was the, the beginning of life with a disability? How, how soon in your life uh, did you know you had this or were you diagnosed? I was diagnosed with a disability very early in my life. Okay. I was diagnosed in kindergarten. My kindergarten teacher noticed that I was struggling uh, academically and socially, especially in math. That was always our biggest thing. It was really clear I wasn't going to be a mathematician whenever I was five years old. <laughs> and that's when uh, I got diagnosed. And from that point on, it became just a way of life for me. I don't remember very much of my life before that. And I had uh, accommodations and I had specialty instruction all the way throughout high school. And I also had a lot of people uh, that, that tried to limit me. I had a teacher that told me that they didn't think I could go to college. So it, school was a real struggle for me um, in, in both ways. But I didn't listen to them. I uh, decided that I was going to go on to college and I had support. I found a wonderful agency called um, Office for Vocational Rehabilitation and they pay for my testing. And uh, all throughout my college, I was able to graduate debt free. And I can just remember though, even there was some, a, a lot of limitations and stigma with that. Uh, whenever I had to get, the, in order to get the accommodations, I had to get tested for a learning disability again. And the psychiatrist that tested me told me I wouldn't go beyond a community college. Mm. And there was still that stigma that, that just existed that, that using those services was cheating and that I would have limited job choices because of that. Wow. Yeah. And, and we've so on a couple of recent episodes, mm -hmm. um, we talked about imposter syndrome. Um, mm -hmm. We talked about overcoming your fears and really just things that are present day to day in owning and running a business. So yeah, this is a show about business, but at the end mm -hmm. of the day, at, at what if we talk about mind, body, and business, this yeah. is obviously very much uh, mind and body, but it's so important. So as you're being told all these things and believing them your whole life, how 
how much did it take to overcome those thoughts and jump into the world of business? Because I'm sure you were told you were told you wouldn't even go to college. Like, did it even come up? Did, it, did people tell you you couldn't go into business for yourself? A lot of people didn't think that I could uh, do a lot of that. I mean, people did encourage me. I think whenever certain things were working out, like the jobs, they said, you know, you might want to consider this business. And some of that sounded like a nice idea, but it just didn't seem like the right fit for me. Okay. And I can remember just a lot of times people telling me, uh, even when I had to go back, I thought, oh, I maybe I want to go back to grad school. And I had to, the testing to get the accommodations, I had to get tested again. And once again, the psychiatrist, they put on there, okay, she has her bachelor's degree, but she, when I said that I was interested in writing news reports or uh, photography, or, or there was a bunch of other things that I put down that I want to do, they said after my testing, I couldn't do that. So I don't think they had, uh, a lot of people didn't think that I could do this and, or uh, anything that involved a, beyond us skilled or semi-skilled work. Yeah, that's, I honestly, I can't even imagine hearing that over and mm -hmm. over and still persevering and, and pursuing it. So amazing for you. I, I've put Michelle's website here. Uh, you can go find her blog, michellesmission.net. Um, and please go check it out, support her, look at all the amazing things she's doing. Um, but let's bring it back a little bit to business. Mm -hmm. So Tell me some of the getting started in this and, and doing the day-to-day -day work of business. What are some of the roadblocks that uh, you experienced, maybe because of your disability, but it, maybe just in general too? Well, some of the roadblocks were uh, just technical things. I mean, I had to learn a lot on how to design a website. I, ne I didn't go to school to learn that. And even when I was in school, uh, computers were still not as much as it is now. So definitely some of that uh, having to play around a lot with, okay, how do we do this? Uh, that, that could be really difficult. Uh, my husband is great though. He uh, works for a call center for internet and he's wonderful, but sometimes uh, he has his limits on like, oh, I got to get, cause he's working himself. So there's a lot of times I have to figure out, oh, how do I do this? And then we have to figure, uh, <laughs> figure that out. So technical uh, problems are, are, are something that can be really hard. Um, I think also sometimes time too, because I do work at another job in the school. So uh, it, it can be really difficult sometimes just to have that, that time because I'm in my other job, but that's why I love summers and the school break. It's always nice to, to be able to have that. So th those are just a few of those uh, challenges that I've, I've run across. Yeah, that's challenges are always mm -hmm. present. It's how we handle them, right? And it's it's good to see that you have a good attitude about it too, and you just consistently move forward, which is the theme of mm -hmm. your life. It seems like so far, which <laughs> I love. Um, so let's let's kind of transition over to, um, you know, what disabilities in the workplace, and I think this is something. Uh, this is the part that I don't know that people talk about enough. Mm -hmm. the, the corporations have it covered for sure. Uh, unfortunately, it's because they're legally required to. How do we bring this present? into the world of small business and entrepreneurship so that more small business owners are, are comfortable. Um, Cause I think there's maybe a feeling of even fear to hire someone with disability. So what's the start of this conversation look like? Well, I think the start of the conversation is when the person with the employee with a disability or a potential employee uh, is honest that they might have an, a disability and they're going to need an accommodation. I think that's where we start at. And I think it's when we even look for maybe people that do have disabilities, because a lot of times people might be afraid, I'm going to have this person with a disability and uh, they're going to be this liability or they're not going to want to work or it's going to be uh, really expensive. And a lot of solutions are, don't require a lot of money. Uh, they certainly, um, everyone with a disability is different, but most people with disabilities want to work. It's trying to find employers that, that are willing to work with that. I know for me, it took a while to find a job. Even the ones that said they were disability friendly, oftentimes weren't that way. So it took me a while to find a good fit. And it also took me a while to be able to ask for accommodations in in a way that I was able to get the results I wanted, because I think when you first start out, 
uh, learning desk for accommodations is a skill and you want to go in and you want to be professional, but you also, and be nice, but you also need to go in getting the results and maintaining a working relationship. I think, I think that's the big thing. I know whenever I ask for accommodations, I I'm, I'm pretty honest. I will go up to the, the principal or the supervisor I'm working with and I'll just explain the situation that I have a learning disability. Please do not give me math. <laughs> and yeah, or please do not, you know, this is what I can do. And for, for the most part, uh, people are understanding about that. They understand uh, the kids are slowly learning this year. Do not ask Mrs. Steiner for help with math. <laughs> I, I can't do that, but I can help out in other areas. And I think it's when you're able to just go in calmly, get a quiet time uh, to, to talk about it. That's also helpful too. I, I always find it's better to be honest because a lot of times people can't see my disability. And that does give me a privilege when I walk through for an interview or I walk into a room uh, with a job. But if I don't speak up and say that I have a math disability, and they put me with the student and the, the expectation is I'm going to help them with their, their math. I'm not going to be able to perform to that standard. So I think it's just very important to be uh, open and honest about what you can and what you're not able to do. And I also think it's important to get things in writing. I can remember when I was asking for accommodations uh, at a new position, I made sure that I put things in an email to my boss. So that way it's in writing what I need. Yeah, that's that's a great tip. And um, obviously the, the focus of today's conversation is not necessarily around business mm -hmm. and the harmonious architecture, but let's bring this to light and state the obvious here. One of the areas that we talk about, the R in harmonious is risk mm -hmm. and defense. We yep. talk about legal protection and that goes both ways. Mm -hmm. It's for the employer and for the employee. And in your case, what you're saying is absolutely correct is put things in writing, uh, you know, asking for those accommodations, making sure your insurance policies are up to date mm -hmm. and, and cover whatever the environment is. Yep. That is, that's really the, the area of the architecture that we're talking about today. Now, I want to also ask you, because I think mm -hmm. um, you hit on a, a number of things and this is, this is just mm -hmm. a short talk. We don't have the time to completely dive into <laughs> it. Um, but you said something that I want to just bring to light and, and put away as soon as I talk about it. And you said, disabilities are liabilities. That's how people tend to think about them. Yes. Uh, and I know you know this, that's a terrible mindset to have. We can't, we can't be thinking that way as, as employers. Um, but I want to ask, you know, what are some of the things, cause you say accommodations and as, as an employer, that mm -hmm. word could scare me um, because I don't know what that, that could mean so many things, right? That can mean like right. building all new wheelchair accessible uh, elevators in my building. I don't, that's a big word, right? So give right. me an example of what some like, normal accommodations would be that maybe are not so scary and we can de-escalate that word a little? Sure. I think it's what the, the person might need. I work for an office where I couldn't uh, put holes in uh, the, the documents. So we they, they had an automatic hole puncher. That was one of the ways because with my visual perception, I couldn't do it. But we have a copier at work that I, I don't need that because you can do it on there. Uh, that That's one way they can do it. Uh, somebody that might have an illness, they might, uh, cancer or something uh, along those lines, they might need to have a schedule that's it's flexible. So if they're not feeling well, uh, they're, they, they can either work from home or when they do go back to the office, it's, it's, it's a workload that's manageable and it builds in those days that they can take off for appointments or whatever they, they need. Uh, some of the other things could involve just like with job duties, maybe somebody can't do math, but you can help out like with reading. Uh, we might have, we also have people that I work with that, that might be on uh, crutches or walkers or um, come in with a cane and we, you know, we, we just provide for them what they need to with, with their job duties and just saying, I may not be able to push this cart or I can't maybe do this position, but we have a lot of different positions for people that, that, that have them. Yeah, that's, and that's to me encouraging to hear because those were not scary things. All of the things yeah. you just said, <laughs> those are very manageable. Um, and it's, it's good to be able to, to visualize what this could mm -hmm. look like. 
And I know for me personally, I have hired a number of people with disabilities uh, mm -hmm. all the way from down syndrome to just some health complications, like you said, where they needed just some flexible time. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I've been blessed to know these people over the years. And you said this before we started the recording, and that is people with disabilities often want to work really badly. And I can tell you from experience, often they want to work more than people who don't have disabilities. So it is absolutely a blessing to have people that want to work in your business. Um, and, and we should be making all the accommodations we can for everybody. I mean, it, it, workplaces yeah. should be comfortable. That's the other area of the architecture that uh, I didn't bring up yet is home. Humans optimize in a meaningful environment, typically called HR. It, it all falls under this category. Um, we need to be thinking about the people that we're hiring and making their lives at work meaningful so they want to show up and work. And I think that's that's really the the heart of what we're talking about here today. So Michelle, I wanna thank you for coming on. Uh, before we wrap up, Give me a little bit. I'll put your website back on the screen. Uh, what are you working on these days that you're really excited about that you'd love to share with people? One of the things that I'm working on uh, right now is I just got an, uh, an article published on Public Source about my experience over the summer traveling solo on an airplane to a Down syndrome convention. And I use the Hidden Sunflower program. And I also have an art show uh, this evening. Uh, and our, uh, we all are artists and it features artists that have disabilities. That's incredible. Well, I want to thank you again for showing up. Um, if you're a little bit confused about all of the funny words that I said during this episode, harmonious, <laughs> home, rad, go take the bad. It's our assessment. We're going to diagnose where your business is, where you need clarity. Uh, are you covered in legal? Do you have a good solid foundation in risk and defense? Do you need to optimize your employees, your home? Humans optimize in a meaningful environment. We want to let you know where your business is and what your business is trying to tell you. So whatif.com, go take the bad. That is a wrap on another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. I hope you got as much as I did out of this episode. Um, and it was a pleasure to meet you, Michelle. Thank you so much for coming on. We will see you next time on Harmonious at Lunch.